Today I want to share with you the Penguin Dictionary of Mathematics by David Nelson. So I got this book actually when I was on a vacation. Uh, we walked into a bookstore in Colorado one day and uh, we we're on vacation and I just came across this. So the reason I bought it was because at the time I was in college and when I was going through my math education, I was on like fast forward mode because I decided to become a math major a little bit late, like a semester after I was already in my college. So I had to take Calc 1 over the summer, Calc 2 in the fall, Calc 3 in the spring. So it was just go, go, go. And taking Calc 1 over the summer is a pretty difficult class to take over the summer. So I kind of always felt a little bit behind with just like terminology and vocab and I didn't have the time when I was taking Calc 1 to really master just the vocabulary and just understand like little things like terms that could pop up. So when I saw this book, I'm like, oh, this is actually a perfect opportunity for me to just have something so I can like look up words so I'm not spending time confused on a definition or confused on a concept where I could just look up the word in this book. And I, the night I got it, I still remember this, we were sitting back in like the hotel and we were just kind of reading and I read at least an hour to two hours of just definitions and looking over them and sometimes they'll tell you like refer to this definition. So I was going through all the definitions, but yeah, I was just really just into the definitions because I felt so behind at the time. So I was just trying to get caught up, but here it is. Penguin Dictionary of Mathematics. It's got some information about the writer beginning. He was a lecturer at the University of Manchester from 81 to 2001. This is the fourth edition, 2008. I think I bought this around 2008, 2009. I can't remember exactly the year, but I was for sure in college. And I was past Calc, so it was probably in like the 2009-ish range when I was starting to get into like Advanced Calc 1, Advanced Calc 2, Abstract Algebra, those kind of classes. And that's when the really definitions really start to hit you. But what's, I mean, there's a lot of things cool about this dictionary. It's not just like, oh, here's a bunch of words, dictionaries. But as I'm just flipping through, you can see there's a lot of visuals. There's even some examples of some key definitions. And it's not just like, here's what the words are, but here's the definitions and even some examples as you can see like the visuals here and like here's a good example right here mean squared error they give you the definition and then it says c estimation like okay well let me go c estimation then you flip this estimation and give you more information mean proportion mean proportional c mean so it gives you a lot of that information so then you find yourself like reading through a bunch of definitions and then they'll tell you a new word it's like go see this word c turning point right there this out a little bit. I think this book is a must for, I'm not even sure if this book is still in print. I'm sure there's versions of it, at least like different math di dictionaries, but this is for sure a must buy for anybody going into getting a bachelor's or graduate degree in mathematics. Like these have just got every single thing that you would need. And it might seem just pretty trivial at times. Like, well, if you don't know what Lo Hopital's rule is, then like, what are you doing? You know, like you're learning Lo Hapital's Lo, Lo rule. So why would you need the definition? It's not just things like that, but what's the difference between a lemma or a theorem or an axiom or any sort of word like that? Those are the things that I found myself looking up of like, well, why aren't we using this theorem? Why are we using this axiom or this lemma or this and that? You know, like those are the words that can really start to trip you up as you go through. And it's, it's hard to come up with an example right here on the spot of what I was thinking in 2009, 2010 of like what words I was looking up. But I remember just there was a list of words that I had in my head of like, oh, I have to look this up. I need to know what that definition is. Let me give you a bunch of angle stuff here. That's really cool. Like this is really, really useful. Not just from a definition aspects, but just, you got examples, you got pictures, you got everything you need. Ooh, look at that. Let's see, polygon. So it's got the definition of polygon, then it even gives you some nice examples of polygons. And the actual, and the actual terms there. Awesome, 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 awesome. Really helped me out. This really got me out of a couple pinches, in, especially in like advanced calc and abstract algebra, where those classes are really heavy on definitions and you really need to know definitions in order to be successful in that class. Uh, I think something with 
I mean, now that I saw that picture of like the 3D shapes, it was something with like three dimensional space that I was trying to look up. I remember it was something along those lines. I was really trying to figure out something about 3D space, but like now I can't remember. Let's see what's in the back as we go. Pocket references, that's kind of awesome. Let's see, we got some reference library. So they're kind of advertising. Ooh, what's this? Let's see. Ooh, they have all the symbols. I forgot about that. That's awesome. I completely forgot that they have all the symbols in the back. What is this, a table of derivatives? It is. Table of derivatives. That's useful. Table of integrals. That's awesome. Some table of integrals here. Most calc books have that stuff right there, but you know, who, who wouldn't want just like this little handheld? This is really small, by the way. Like, this is not a big book. So there's a mass, nice. Some symbols for the Greek alphabet. That's useful. <laughs> That's extremely useful because those are used all the time. And when people just throw around terms like your gamma, like, wait, what is gamma? And then you, you, you can't remember. I remember looking at this table and now that I'm seeing it, I haven't, I seriously have not seen this book in a very long time, a very long time, at least 10 years. I say I, I've not seen this book in 10 years. I honestly thought I threw it away. I thought it was gone, but I found it in my, in a bin in my crawl space when I was looking for something. I could not believe I still had it. symbols it's just pretty much everything you would need for a program in mathematics every single thing that you would need and it just fit right in your backpack common science and symbols i don't think there was anything else before that table of derivatives integrals let's see i'm pretty sure that's the end of the definitions yeah z-score just taught z-score in my stats class the other day this is a must buy for anyone in a math program. Very, very useful. Fits directly in a backpack. Very, very small. I actually have a pocket notebook right here. Pocket notebook's four by six, so it's a little bit bigger than a pocket notebook, but you can get an idea that this is a pretty small book. So it fits very nicely in a backpack, so you don't have to, and, and you know, with phones and everything. You could look up that stuff, but sometimes that's kind of hard because now Google does like AI automatically generated answers and you can't always rely on that. So it's just easier if you just pull out this dictionary and then you're good to go. So Penguin Dictionary of Mathematics definitely saved me in my undergrad. So I hope it saves you.